Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to take a look at creating these retro glam sparkles here in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to create a symbol out of them and then look at using some of the symbol tools to sort of mix it up here in our little background here. And then I'm also going to show you how to just use single symbols and we're going to drag them out of our library and apply some glints to our little golden bowl sitting there. Alright, I'm going to close this file and I'm going to be working with this file here and we're going to start by creating a new layer. I'm just going to double click on that layer. This brings up my layer options dialog box. I'm going to name the layer stars. I always like to be organized when I'm working so hit OK and we have our stars layer here. Now the first tool we're going to use is the star tool. Big surprise. And we're going to grab the star tool and just as is, the star tool drags out a five-pointed, nice, even star. Fill is white, stroke is black. I just got rid of the stroke. But we have here a white star. We need to edit this star quite a bit before it looks like what we want it to look like. And we could come in here with the direct selection tool and start selecting anchor points and deleting them and moving things around until we have the star we want. But there's a much easier way of going about that. Select that star tool and start dragging out a star. But before you let go of your star, try hitting the up and down arrow keys. Okay? When we hit the up arrow key, we are adding arms to the star. When we hit the down arrow key, we are taking arms away until we just get a little triangle. I want a four-pointed star, so it's going to look sort of like a diamond. But that really doesn't look too much like a sparkle, so we're going to take a little step further. Try holding down the control key and pulling out. Okay? When you do that, you can see that you're making the points of the star quite a bit bigger. I'm going to let go of control, and then I can size the star down a little more. Now I'm going to hold down control again, make the points a little bit bigger. And again, like that, and there I've got a nice star shape. I let go, and I have it filled with white. You can see down here, I've got white set as my fill color, and my stroke is set to none. So there we go. There is the very base of a glam star. I'm going to rotate it so that it's straight up and down and straight across, approximately, just like that. Now, we also need to add a little bit of a sparkle to the very center of it. So, I'm going to show you how to go about doing that as well. We are going to use the Flare tool, and the Flare tool is located if you click and hold on the Rectangle tool, or we were just using the Star tool, so that's what you're going to see. Right beneath the Star tool is the Flare tool. But we want to make a few adjustments to the Flare tool. I'm going to select it. and. We're going to change some of the settings in here. Let's change the size to 115 points. Let's leave the opacity at 50% and let's up the brightness quite a bit. Maybe go to 70% on that. The halo, we're going to leave the growth and fuzziness at 20 and 50. The rays, we're going to reduce the number of rays to 8 and we're going to make the longest of them to only be about 200 percent roughly and the fuzziness we're going to leave at 100 now under rings we're going to set the path to let's try 250 points uh, the number we will set that to let's try 7 and the largest we'll leave at 50 percent and the direction of the flare we will leave at 45% as well. So hit OK. And with our newly edited flare tool, select in the center of our star and just click and drag out until you see a decent sized flare. Like that looks pretty good. I'm going to select my selection tool and I'm just going to click away and you can see I have this nice little star. Maybe I'll make my flare a little bit bigger. I just selected it. I'm holding down Control or Shift and Alt. I mean, not Control. Shift and Alt, if you're on the Mac, that would be Shift and Option. And I'm just going to drag it to make it a little bit bigger, just like that. Now, one thing I do want to point out. If you draw a flare over just a plain white background, I will up here, you can see it looks way different 
than if I just drag it and place it here on top of this background. That's because a lot of what's in a flare is composed of different blending modes. So it really depends on the background you place a flare over. Generally speaking, if you place it over something other than white, it's going to look fine. It's just when it's out over white, it really looks quite bad. So I'm going to select that and get rid of it. Now I need to select both the star and the flare here in the center. So I'm just with the selection tool, I'm just going to draw out a big selection and make sure I select both of them. I have them both selected. I'm going to come up here to Object, Object, Group. Hotkey is Control G if you're on the Mac. That's Command G. Now these are a group. These two objects are a group now. So I can just select one of them, and it selects both because they are a group. So there is our first little star. Now the next step is going to be converting it to a symbol. So let's select it and go Window Symbols. Here's my Symbols palette. And all I need to do at this point is select this little New Symbol button located at the bottom of the Symbols palette. Click that. I can give it a name. I'll just name it Retro Star. You can select a type, whether graphic or movie clip, and flash registration. That has to do with flash as well. You can also enable guides for nine slice scaling. I will just set this to be a graphic and leave the flash registration to the top left hand corner. By the way, this is if you're using Flash CS3, you're going to have all these options here. Hit OK. And there we go. We have created a star. Now, what I'm going to do is hit the delete key. That deletes that instance of that symbol from my artboard. It is still saved in the symbols library. I actually have this other sparkle here, which I'm going to get rid of. Now, this uh, sparkle slash star can be placed on the stage in many different ways. We can just drag it right out of our symbols library and place it. And we can drag another one out and place it. And here's a really cool thing about symbols. I'm going to place a couple of these around our artboard. Now, I could be looking at this and I might decide that I really want the star part of this, not the flare part, just the star part, to be, oh, I don't know, blue. Well, that would require me, if this were normal artwork, to come in here and change each of these individually. Now, I only have five of them on the stage, so that's really not too many. But let's say I started getting to the point where I had hundreds of them. If this was a leaf for a tree in an illustration, I had you know 1,500 of them, and I decided I needed to change the color. Uh, instead of being green, I wanted it to look more like it was autumn. Well, an easy way to change the color of a symbol is by double-clicking the symbol. When you double-click the symbol, Illustrator tells you you are about to edit the symbol definition. Any edits you make will be applied to all its instances. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes, I am sure I want to continue. So now we enter into this mode called isolation mode where we are just editing our star. I'm going to come over here to the layers palette and I'm going to select the path. That's our white star. I'm going to change the fill color to blue. Hit OK. And then up here in the top left hand corner, I can just hit that little back arrow, which is exit isolated group. And when I do that, you can see that now the blue wings of the star they are now all changed across the entire document. I don't really want to do that, so let's change it back to white. Now, I could just double click on my star again, or my sparkle, I should be calling it. But another way you can do it is just by double clicking the instance here in the symbols panel. Double click on that, and this enters us into a true isolation mode where we cannot see anything except the symbol we're working on, which can be nice at times, especially if you have a lot going on in your illustration. Select that path. Change the fill color to white. By the way, to change that fill color, I'm just double clicking on the fill swatch down here at the bottom of the toolbar. And then I'm just going to hit the back arrow key to go back to the original illustration, which is right here. Okay, so we have all of these. I'm going to delete all of these instances from my artboard. And we're going to use something called the symbol sprayer. And that's what we're going to use to put these symbols on our artboard. So in the toolbar, select this little spray can. It's called the symbol sprayer tool. And I'm going to select our star symbol from the library of symbols here. And I'm just going to start spraying it on stage. Now you can see as I'm spraying it, 
it's coming out kind of slowly. Let me undo that. Notice I'm just clicking and holding and moving my mouse around, and they're just sort of popping out. You can make quite a few changes to the Symbol Sprayer tool. Simply double click on it, and you've got your Symbolism Tools options. I can change the diameter, which I am going to. I'm going to make these quite a bit smaller, maybe half the size. Put it around right, right around 100 pixels. The intensity is 3. Now the intensity really has to do with the amount of symbols that the symbol sprayer will spray. For instance, if I set the symbol intensity to 10 and hit OK, I'm going to be putting out a whole ton of these stars, OK? Way more than I want. So I'm going to double click in there and set the intensity back to something more manageable, like 3 or 4. And I am going to hit OK. Now I'm going to spray some of these symbols onto the stage or onto the artboard, excuse me, just like that. Now these stars are a bit too big for my liking, so I'm going to double click into my symbol here, sitting in the symbol library. Notice that when I use the symbol sprayer tool, all of our symbols are grouped into what is called a symbol set. If you look in your live or your layers panel, excuse me, you have a symbol set. So I'm just going to double click on my symbol sitting in my symbols library and I'm going to edit it. I want it to be a little bit smaller. So let me just double click on this layer and uh, change the color to something you can see a little easier here if it lets me. And it's not letting me so. I'm just going to come up here to Object Transform and I'm going to say Scale. We're going to Scale Uniform and we're going to set this to be say 70% of what it is now. Let's preview that. Maybe a little smaller. Let's try 60%. That looks pretty good. So hit OK. And then you can, to exit this mode, you can just double click anywhere. Okay, just like that. Now you can see we have all of these uh, sparkles much smaller, much more uh, manageable. I'm going to close the symbols palette here. Now we're going to take a look at using some tools uh, to spread these symbols around because you can see I can't just select symbols and push them around. I can grab the direct selection tool and I still can't click symbols and move them around. So I need the special symbol tools to do things like resize them. They don't look very real as is because they're all the exact same. They're all the same size. They're not rotated or anything like that. So let's use some symbol tools to change that. Click and hold your mouse button on the Symbol Sprayer tool and notice you have all of these symbolism tools. Let's first use the Symbol Shifter tool. We're going to use this to, oops, make sure you select the symbol set. We are going to use this to push these symbols back within the bounds of our artboard. All right, because we want all of our stuff to stay right in here within our document. All right, so I'm just clicking and sort of pushing these upward and pushing them together, and it moves them around quite a bit. So there we go. I've sort of contained them all within my artboard. Now I'm going to use the symbol scruncher, and what this does is it pulls symbols closer together. Now in order to use this, I want to double click on it, and I want to increase the diameter a little bit, maybe to 250 approximately. Hit OK. And when I click, it pulls these symbols closer together. Now, a little trick with using this is you can hold down the Alt key or the Option key, and that pushes symbols apart, pushes symbols away from wherever you're clicking. Okay, so there we go. I kind of mixed it up a little more with the Symbol Scruncher tool. Now there's the Symbol Sizer tool. This tool does exactly what it says. It resizes your symbols but you can see that it's got much too much power. So I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to reduce the intensity to about 2. And just like with the Symbol Scruncher tool, I can hold down the Alt key or the Option key if it's a Mac and that will make my symbols smaller. So we're just going to resize some of our symbols. And now notice as I'm going around and doing this, the closer a symbol is to the center of my big brush that I'm wielding here, the closer the symbol is to the center of this brush, the more they are being affected. So that's something to keep in mind as you are using these tools. Next tool we're going to use is the Symbol Spinner tool. And this does exactly what it says. It just spins your symbols. And when you start using it, you're going to see that your symbols have these little arrows that appear. And that is just showing you what way the symbols are rotating. Okay, I just like to use this tool in short strokes, just sort of pull it around 
my arc board and it just starts to mangle up everything that I've got and really mixes things up. You can see now our symbols look a lot more like they should. They look much more mixed up and much more natural indeed. The last one of these tools we're going to look at is the symbol screener and this is pretty cool because this tool sort of screens out whatever symbols it runs over. And you're going to see exactly what I mean by screens out. We're going to drag this up this side to affect them. You can see it's like lowering the opacity, partially converting the blending mode of those symbols to screen. So it looks a lot more like it's semi-transparent. Yields a pretty interesting effect for something like these sparkles here sitting on this background. So there we go. Those are the symbol tools that we're going to use, and we now have our sparkles set up. The last thing I'm going to do is just select this entire stars layer and go to transparency, the transparency palette that is, go window transparency, and set the blend mode to overlay. And there we go. We have an interesting effect happening there. Maybe too much of an effect. We can see too much of the flare tool. So I'm going to set it to screen and just reduce the opacity to something like 50. And there we go. We've got some nice sparkles happening in the background there. Now I'm going to lock up that layer and I'm going to turn on my golden bowl layer. This is just a little illustration of this golden bowl copied using live trace from a stock photo. But it's all vector here and I just want to add some sparkles to it. So conveniently I've just created this sparkle symbol. I'm going to drag it out of the library onto the golden bowl layer. You can't drag onto a locked layer. I'm going to use the selection tool and I'm just going to drag it right over here and place it right on top of where it looks like I'm getting a pretty big highlight. Whoops. And I'm just going to make this sparkle a little bit bigger, maybe rotate it a little bit. Notice I can use regular rotation tools when I haven't created a symbol set. All right, and I'm going to drag another instance of this symbol out of the stage and make this one a little bit smaller and rotate this one as well. Place that one closer to the back of the cup, or the bowl, excuse me. Select both of these sparkles and set them to screen. And you can see there, shining nicely off of that golden bowl, we have our sparkles. And also falling in the background are the other sparkles that we used. So that's it for this one. That's how you create those sparkles. But really the important thing that I hope you got out of this tutorial is how to use those symbol tools and really how effective using symbols is. Because really at this point I could go in and edit this star by double clicking on this. I could just select the path, change the color to something like black, go back, and all of my symbols here are going to have to update based on what I just did. And because I've got them all set to screen, you really can't see the black very well. But that's what symbols do, and that is one of the big reasons they're extremely useful in Illustrator, um, doing many, many types of things. So that's it for this one, and I hope you've learned something. hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and please go check out the site. That is www.tutvid.com.